Hello and welcome back to another Space Engineers Showcase video. I am once again, yes, surprise, surprise, looking at another one of your designs that you have linked me in the comment section of one of my videos. And if you want to see one of your ships showcased on this channel, just leave a link on one of my videos and I will eventually get around to it. But for today, I have randomly chosen the Kopesh RTM S which is a lovely ship featuring a single mod. Bet you can't guess what that is with the big aura around it. But it does feature both the DLC packs, so the decoration pack and the skin pack. So if you don't have them, you might have some empty gaps in this ship. So this ship is for deep space exploration, much like the previous ship I showcased, but it's a wee bit smaller. Pressing F10 and finding it, this ship weighs in at 1,948 blocks. It is a modded ship which features the defense shield mod, so it's very tanky and can take a lot of damage, which is great. Especially in Space Engineers where ships just tend to get shredded just by looking at stuff. So let's uh, go around the outside and uh, see what kind of stuff this ship has to offer. So it's got a very uh, black core of the ship using the uh, fiber skin. Unfortunately, it doesn't show up too well on the YouTubes because of compression. So hopefully it will come out all right. So at the very front here, we've got uh, two uh, cameras for you to view straight forwards. These cameras are sort of dangling off that block in the middle there because they are just sort of clipped through a corner block. But nonetheless, it still looks good. On this side, as we come around, we've got some uh, sloped block and some nice lights flashing green. We can see some nice detail there, although it is very hard due to the sun rotation and it being black. So as we come along, we can see a catwalk, which comes across to the ship name with a lovely symbol. That symbol looks very similar to the Euro Truck Simulator 2 little icon you can have for your business. But anyway, this has got hydrogen thrusters on it, which is always good, so you can go in and atmosphere it and through space. Got a nice a large landing gear sitting underneath. Good use of catwalks on the black and white. Coming around to here, we've got another sneaky little hydrogen thruster surrounded by some missile launchers. As we come around to the side, we have this peculiar thing right here. So we got a turreted missile launcher right there. And then these little blocks either side of them containing even more missile launchers, but they are static. Using a script, where the turret is facing and when you fire, it will also fire these little rocket pods on the side. So wherever you aim, this will turn on a little rotor and will aim towards wherever you are. So it's just some extra oof to firing it and it's a lovely custom turret to have around. And I will show a little bit more of that later on. Moving across here, we've got some interior turrets, which is our main form of defense on this ship outside of what we can control. Some more hydrogen thrusters going around, good use of the catwalks. Coming around to the very back here, we've got some blast or edges with a lovely blue light. I am a sucker for these blue colours. A lot of hydrogen thrusters there to give us some nice oomph going forwards. We've got two large landing gears there, like the two on the front, so we can land perfectly flat on the ground. As we come underneath, I believe that is the jump drive. I haven't used one of them for ages, so I am a bit rusty. But underneath we can see the modules from the refineries and the assemblers because this ship is equipped with basically everything you need to be a mobile base. We've got the antenna there which is going to protect you a lot more than any armoured blocks because Space Engine is logic. And we've got some steps going down which are purely there for decoration. Connected there to connect us up to any other ship. And a merge block there if you want to connect yourself up nice and solid, just in case you press P and disconnect the ship that you didn't want disconnected. As we come across to here, we've got four more interior turrets there just to deter anyone from coming underneath you. And then we're back at the very front. Now it's time to go around the top. So at the top here, we can see where I'm standing. We got some nice plain block work. The texture pack has done wonders for just straight block ships. It really breaks up that old sort of worn down rusted look the vanilla blocks have. We've got an ore detector on there. We've got a proper galley turret which we can control. Another connector and merge block for us to connect up to another ship and all that. 
Coming along to the back here, we've got this little turning thing, which is the shield generator. Yes, I do like this, but it is a mod. They should add something like this in the vanilla game, because I do like the little moving parts on it. Then we come to the very back there, and we got the shield emitter. So with that out of the way, I believe it is time to go inside. Now dropping down here, we have to find the little ladder, which was only on one side, and here it is. So we've got these steps going up, which are on the same level as the landing gear. It's a little bit risky to do, especially if you're landing on an uneven surface, but it's not my ship to really dictate that. But we can land on here, turn off our jetpack, and in we go. Programmable block there with the floor plan in it, and a nice little icon on the little screen. We can see the refineries above us with the modules which we saw earlier. A large cargo container with a nice lot of materials in there to get you going, so that's all in there ready pasted for you to use. You can then turn around and see some more thrusters there, some conveyors all going around and all that. And an interior turret just above us to make sure no pirates are going to sneak up on us. And of course a little gyroscope. Let's go inside the ship now, opening up the door and closing it because we are in space. We have a nice LCD screen here telling you everything that is in your ship. So we got 1k iron, 1k nickel, and all that. And a nice sort of uranium to keep this ship going. Turning around, we have a nice air vent in here, and we do have access to the large cargo container from the inside, which is jolly good stuff. Opening up this door, we can go inside, and the doors will automatically close. So we do have the door script on here to make sure it's all airtight at all times. We have the big medical bay there for us to recharge, perhaps change our outfits and all that. Then as we turn around we can see the DLC blocks. We've got a big cryopod there, we've got the DLC kitchen, DLC bed, DLC toilet, and the armor lockers and whatnot. And then coming through this tiny little gap here, we can then enter this doorway, which is which will just close on me. I'm trying to talk here. Open up step through before it tries and kills me. There we go. And we can see the little script there from earlier, that first programmable block, being displayed on this little screen, and the two cockpits that make all the magic happen. So in this cockpit over here, which is how we control turrets. So I press number one, we can now take control of one of the missile launches on the little side there, and if I was to press it, you might notice that the entire base is moving. So there's the ship down there, and if I was to fire it, all the missiles will start firing. Good stuff, isn't it? It gets a bit disorientating, especially when you're turning at high speeds. But yes, it is one way of building a custom turret that works wonderfully. Pressing number two is the opposite side of the ship. So you can just fire all the missiles you want. Number three is just a plain Gatling turret on the very top there. So there's the shield generator and this little other parts on there, there's some hydro thrusters at the front of the ship, and we can just pummel it like that. Number eight is for locking the rotors on the rocket launcher. So if I come back into the rocket launcher, and now turn myself around, you'll notice that the rocket pods, just either side of me, are no longer moving. But they still can fire if you aim yourself up in a central position. So that's if you want to turn off the rocket pods and just aim this one turret manually. And then number nine is to turn off the script to stop the turret system from working if you just want a plane missile launcher just to fire around without worrying about firing the other missiles. Hopping out and going to the other jet, this is the main cockpit where we have quite a few options actually. Number one is a lot of missile launches at the very front there. So if you want something super dead, you can always just fire that into them. Number two is one of the cameras on the front, and number three is the other camera on the front. Number four is a lovely cinematic view on the side there. Look at all those missiles! Number five is to turn the turret master on and off, but that's exactly the same as the odd other cockpit, so I'm just going to leave that on. Number six is for the landing gear, seven is for the hydrogen thrusters, Eight is your spotlights, and number nine is your jump drive. In fact, let's go for a jump, shall we? Oh, I do love doing this. Here we go. Fats, screenshot time. Whee! There we go. Oh, I love that particle effect. It's so good. 
Moving on to tab number two, number one and number three are identical. They are simply to turn the lights and the connectors on and off. So you see right there, I've just turned them on and off. There's flashing white and red. And then two and four are for manually doing the connectors. Number six is the shield generator for you to turn it on and off. Should you need to, for whatever reason you want, the ship is perfectly capable of having it up at all times. Number eight is to lock the rotors in place. And number nine is the self-repair system. Coming to tab number three are stuff that we never should touch, which is attaching and detaching rotor heads. So just simply do not touch them. But as for that, that is it for the outside and its functionality. Now it's time for the good old movement test. Going forwards. It's really fast, isn't it? Very fast. And then stopping. Pretty good on the stopping, isn't it? Going left. Going right. It's fairly slow. Going down. Going up. Wow, going up is brilliant on this thing. Look at that go. And then moving my mouse around. Let's in fact find the camera. That doesn't really help, does it? Moving it around is a lot easier to control than the previous ship I showcased, but it still has a nice lot of weight to it, which is something I do enjoy with ships. Now it's time just to fly around there. I wonder if I could just hit myself with this. If I just keep spinning myself like that. Yep, there we go. Luckily, the self-repair system is on, so I shouldn't do too much damage to myself. Nope. I've done barely any damage to myself thanks to that repair system. But other than that, that is basically it for this video. It's a lovely ship to play around with, perfectly ready for any survival adventure with its refineries, assemblies and shields to keep you nice and protected. But if you don't like the shield mod, you are perfectly capable of leaving it out and the ship should be perfectly fine. In fact, I'll go and test that right now. If I just come outside here. And then just remove the shield emitter. There we go. And then remove that. Oh, there's the jump drive. I don't think we want to remove the jump drive. But no, if you didn't want to have the shield generator on there, you can just simply load it without the mod and it is still perfectly fine and doesn't interrupt anything. You see that I have removed these and they're simply just being projected back on there, but they haven't broke any functionality of the ship. But that is it for this video. It'll be in the description below if you wish to download and play around with it yourself. And I'll be back with another showcase video some point soon. Bye bye.